Hey y'all, this is Kobe R. Rice and I'm back again for another weekly update. Welcome back to the epic, fantastical journey of a black female sci-fi writer. And it certainly has been epic and fantastical, especially <laughs> with everything that, that's been going on for the past two weeks. Um, for those of you who are watching the vlog version of this, you might notice that my camera looks a little different. Things look a little like smoother. Um, that's because I'm using my HD camera, which generally I don't particularly like to do without like the right lighting. But um, I my lighting is like really bad and the HD picks up like on my face a lot more. So if it looks different, that's why. Anyway, we're not here to talk about my ethereal beauty, <laughs> even though that's a part of it. Um, today's episode is episode number 38, and it's called Giving Myself Some Grace, which I basically picked that phrase up from a podcast and just a brand that I've been following in general um, called the Happy Black Woman Podcast based off of um, and a part of the Happy Black Woman brand. And the brand is run by Rosetta Thurman, and she is really incredible and amazing in terms of being a business coach, motivational speaker, and essentially like a guide to women empowering themselves, establishing their own businesses, and also um, just being able to get the bravery, the confidence, and the resources that they need in order to make their businesses successful. And I haven't actually um, invested into any of her paid services yet. Um, not because they aren't amazing, but because I, um, I don't necessarily know that I need her her particular retreat services right now because I've already launched myself headfirst into my business and I'm actually pretty I wouldn't say that like I'm where I want to be but I really really love my progress and where I'm going and how things are unfolding so I feel as though I'm on the right track um, but that doesn't mean that um, the the services are not fantastic they are and her retreats are fantastic from what i've seen and what i've heard um and i think that women of all ages all backgrounds all races and at all business levels will definitely benefit from her services um but that's sort of like a mini pitch for her but the reason why i bring her up is that i listened to a podcast of hers recently um, where she had a guest on and the guest was talking about how it's important to give yourself some grace wherein you know business owners and entrepreneurs especially if they're women especially if they're mothers and wives tend to always have this pressure put on them such that they feel as though they have to be juggling everything fantastically and perfectly like we have to be balanced all the time we have to be um, running everything smoothly all the time and that is honestly just not the case i can speak to that like myself and also the podcast guest was speaking towards that and um she was encouraging women um and the listeners of the podcast to basically take a step back take a breath and give yourself some grace which essentially means to not be so hard on yourself and to realize that this image of being perfectly imbalanced and you know juggling everything perfectly is pretty much a myth <laughs> and there's always going to be some point at which you're doing fantastically but you're going to be dropping some balls in the juggling game that is life business love and family and relationships um so that's what i'm doing i'm taking that advice and I'm looking at everything I have to do, which is significant. It's a significantly long list, but I am just looking at it, taking a breath in, doing what I can, and then moving on and moving forward. That's really all that I can do. So um, as you guys know, I was sick for the past week and a half, right smack in the middle of the, like, the launch point of graduate school. My daughter was sick. A whole bunch of other things were going on that really put me back. My apartment essentially like exploded, not literally, like not in like a dangerous, you know, <laughs> ground zero toxic zone sort of way. But there were things going on that forced me to like basically move everything around in my apartment. And so um, <laughs> so now it's just looking like type crazy right now. And I was feeling overwhelmed. Like I felt like I needed to be 100% on graduate school, 100% on my TA ship, which I have literally 400 assignments to grade because I just got those this week. I felt like I had I had to be 
on top of my like adulting, which is just like taking care of my apartment, you know, doing all the errands, handling all the finances, which is what I do every day in all areas of my life. I have to keep up with it, but I can't be 100% with everything. Um, and certain things are going to fall through the cracks. And so instead of letting myself get stressed out, I decided to give myself some grace. And a part of giving myself some grace and stepping is, is, um, essentially me stepping back and doing this podcast because I feel as though it's really important for me personally for organizational purposes but also just for self-galvanizing purposes to record this podcast and like remind myself how far I've come also remind like pretty much myself of all the things that I've been able to accomplish um and for those of you who have been with me for at least the past year, you will know, and I'm showing it on the screen right here, that I have my fantastic, um, I told my daughter it was a happy jar, <laughs> but it's not exactly a happy jar. It, it is filled with happy, but it's specifically um, a jar filled with post-it notes that contain every single, or rather most of my major successes this year and I'm actually coming up a little short not because I I'm short on successes but because I forgot to update this jar for like the past three months <laughs> so so I really need to sit back and and think about all the things I've achieved so I can fill that jar and it, I just just looking at the jar makes me feel really good about myself because all the paper is color-coded and you know you have it looks like a nice happy little rainbow there and every single slip represents a success. Um, and one of the more recent successes that I added to it, I'm not sure if I talked about this on my last podcast, was that I am officially letting go of the language of fear. That's, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm going to try to say yes to more of the things that scare me, as Shonda Rhimes says. And, um, you know, so there are a couple of things coming up this week that feel a little stressful um and I had to I don't know rearrange a lot of my schedule and you know I'm just kind of wigged out about a little bit of about some stuff but you know and I actually just realized that like I double booked for something which is absolutely 100% terrifying so we'll see <laughs> but still I had decided to say yes to myself um, yes to the things that scare me and to really just take the plunge um, while at the same time still giving myself some grace. Okay, so now that I've had that really long intro, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the stuff that I have been able to achieve this week, even though I've been taking time to take care of myself and get back on my feet. Um, so the first thing is that, so this past week, my writing really suffered for obvious reasons. So I only wrote 450. 59 words for the week. However, for the month of August, which is fantastic, I wrote 20,395 words in total, which is amazing. You know, I'm really excited about the momentum I'm able to, you know, keep up with regard to my writing and my daily word counts and stuff like that. And I'm really trying to not only stay on that plane, but maybe even upgrade for this final third of the year, which is something important that you guys should note. Please note that we are now officially over 66 percent finished with the year of 2017. So we really only have September, October, November and December, four more months to reach our 2017 goals. So I really am taking that seriously, taking it into account and trying to focus um, and just, you know, find out what we can actually accomplish on my side of the world. And you guys should be doing the same, especially if you're going to be an, um, an author or you're an aspiring filmmaker, a game designer, like what can you do in the next four months that will allow you to achieve your goals or at least make significant progress towards your goals. Um, for me hitting that 20,000 plus mark has been, really amazing and um actually in a related note sort of semi-related i'm i'm about to hit the twenty thousand plus mark for my reader list which is really incredible like i literally went from 300 readers in january to now nearly eighteen thousand readers um 
for basically up through August 31st. And the last third of the year is going to yield even more readers because I have um, one smaller giveaway running at New Adult Noir and then I have the larger holiday promo, the 25 Days of Box Sets promo running for New Adult Noir um, in December. And um, it's just been really amazing and fantastic the way that um, I have been able to grow not only my subscriber list, but also the new adult noir business in just under a year. Um, and that just really proves that whatever it is you focus on will grow. And I've certainly been focusing hardcore on my readership, my reader base, and on developing the hub, essentially, for dark and gritty sci-fi fantasy horror and sci-fi fantasy horror romance. Because I felt like that's what I write, that's what I love and we needed a space. A lot of authors who are participating in my promos are actually really excited and really thankful. Um, and I've gotten like a lot of emails from authors who are just so incredibly happy that someone has finally started a space for dark and gritty sci-fi fantasy and horror. You know, and so it's really nice to know that there was this need out there. And I might not have thousands of authors on my list yet, um, but we're growing. So right now, the New Adult Noir author community is over 150 authors strong. And the New Adult Noir readership community, um, because I promote it to my list, is nearly 20,000 readers strong. Now, the thing that I have noticed, though, is that I do need to, and I'll do this at the beginning and pretty much throughout the entire year of 2018, I want to go from quantity to absolute quality. I want my open rates to be above, at least at or above 50%. Um, if possible, I know that's a really high standard, especially looking at what the industry standards are for open rates um, with regard to email marketing. But I really want to get those readers who are the rabid, you know, ravenous, obsessed fans who just would die to have like all the dark and gritty reads that they can consume to their dark hearts content. I want those readers and essentially pretty much only those readers on both of my lists for my personal author list and for the new adult noir author list. So this year has been about just, you know, getting a grip on, um, you know, doing giveaways, recruiting readers, you know, just basically like growing my list. But in 2018, I really do want to scale my lists back and really call the lists for high quality readers, readers who are not only going to be excited about the specific genres and material we have available for them, but who are going to be, you know, some of our biggest advocates and um, who are excited specifically about the new adult noir brand and about the Colby R. Rice brand. So I, this year was about quantity and next year is going to be about quality. So I'll be scaling back probably a lot of my participation in newsletter swaps and stuff like that. Uh, I will still be running New Adult Noir, obviously, but um, I really want to attract only those readers who are going to be like diehard fans and who are going to like basically be fanatics because that's the kind of reader I like to engage with the most. Um, so that's a goal and I'm excited with all the growth that I've seen in both my word count and in my readership and I hope to continue that um, this year and next year. Um, this, this September for like the final, uh, I'm going to say the final quarter, it's not the final quarter, it's the final third of the year, I'm also today going to be investing in the Dragon speaking software because I really do want to, now that graduate school is in full fledged swing like I'm taking four classes I'm TAing and working as a TA for one class and then I'm also dramaturging the Adams Family Musical and with all that on my plate like I literally only can afford some fringe hours to writing my novels and growing my um, my base and running new adult noir and then I also have to consider that I'm trying to like finish the Sandman movie and get that done um, and, uh, 
along with the other mini projects I'm working on teeny bit by teeny bit and I really need to invest in those resources both software resources and human resources that are going to allow me to run my business at um, the level it needs to run while I am busy basically knocking grad school out of the park from you know September all the way up until like early December mid-December so um Dragon, I'll be investing in definitely for this month. Um, I will also, hopefully, if I can get a good candidate, be investing in a virtual assistant for this month. Um, and I, you know, even with the virtual assistant, like even though they don't know all the systems that I have in place, I will be training them for like the first couple of weeks and paying them for training. So if you're listening to this podcast or you're watching this vlog and you have even a modicum of organizational skills and you're interested in becoming a part of um, you know a publisher and blog that specializes in sci-fi fantasy horror um, and sci-fi fantasy horror romance if you have any remote interest in any of those areas please contact me and <laughs> um, you can email me at Colby R. Rice at rebelragdoll.com that's c-o-l-b-y-r-r-i-c-e at rebelragdoll.com that's r-e-b-e-l-r-a-g-d-o-l-l.com um, and you can put in the title line of your email superhero va or superhero virtual assistant um, because i'll be hiring someone for anywhere between five to ten hours a week um, to just take care of these tasks that I need done so that I can run all my businesses smoothly. Um, so yeah, and you'll be working with me very closely. I am not a tyrant. I'm very like calm, relaxed, sweet, and understanding. And I'm actually like a really good trainer in my opinion. So, and don't take that in like an animalistic sense, but just take that in like <laughs> a job skills training sense. Um, and so if you're interested in making a little side money, having someone who can uh, basically create projects for you that are reasonable and you can get done within your allotted time for throughout the week. Um, and if you're interested at all in publishing, book blogging, author promotion, or just being organized and helping somebody organize their life and their time, then you are the exact person I want and I would love for you to apply. Um, so those are the two resources I'll be investing in this month and I hope that it will really help as soon as possible because, you know, the work is already piling up and I'm already like, again, getting crazy but trying to give myself some grace. Okay, so, um, Hollow Point, still progressing, you know, as it will. The Plot Like a Badass book that I'm working on is also still progressing at a pretty steady clip. Again, last week my word count was really whack. But this week is going to be a little different starting today. Um, I also worked a little bit on my Badass TV series template. As you guys know, there are a couple of properties that I'm interested in turning into a fully-fledged TV series that will be produced independently. Um, but right now, I am learning and training myself with regard to just understanding what a TV series and season looks like. And... You know, I actually really am pretty well versed as to what TV seasons and series look like. But in terms of getting, um, breaking those seasons down episode by episode, really nailing down character arcs, making sure that, you know, the locations I choose are, you know, typical, the locate the same locations that you're going to see every single episode. Um, just getting those rules and tropes down is not hard, but it does take time and it does take practice. So I've been working on the template um, that we're going to basically use. It's a production template that we're going to use at, at I can't even say my own company's name because it's an alliteration, <laughs> that we'll be working on and using at Rebel Ragdoll Productions. Um, we'll, we'll have a template and a way that we shoot um, our TV series, we'll have a protocol, um, we'll have a writer's room, we'll have all of that. And I'm just laying the foundation for all of that little by little, day by day. So that's really exciting. And it's nice to have two properties to use in order to not only build out the TV series for those properties, but also just build out the protocol and the production template for my company in general. So that's still going. 
little by little and there's no immediate deadline on that that's just something I've started and I will continue to work on um, more announcements from new adult noir so this is actually more for you guys if you're readers all right um, if you're authors and you want to participate in our giveaways you can always access the links below and apply to the giveaways and the promos that you want to apply to most of them are free some of them are not but for readers um, New Adult Noir has literally just kicked off its September round of free book promos and series discovery promos. So we have 27 dark and gritty sci-fi, fantasy, and horror novels, as well as sci-fi, fantasy, and horror romance novels fully available at newadultnoir.com. So you just go to newadultnoir.com. Um, you'll come to this amazing website that I designed. <laughs> it took hours to design myself. Um, but then you'll uh, click on the free books tab and it'll take you right to um, the free books page. It's called Our September Dark and Gritties. So 100% um, free. Two of them actually are free only through Kindle Unlimited. But everything else you can get free through Insta Freebie, Book Funnel, or Amazon, or on um or on the retailers that are specified and they're all free and you basically can build up a library of dark and gritty sci-fi fantasy and horror reads and it's really great and these authors are amazing and I'm really proud to be featuring them on our site and you will see this free book promo renewed every single month so every month we will have a fresh crop of dark and gritty reads um, that authors will be offering to our new adult noir readers, which is great. And then we also, as I mentioned before, had the series discovery promos where these series themselves are not free, but um, I have featured 10 really boss, kick-ass, dark and gritty, sci-fi, fantasy, and horror series on the New Adult Noir website. So again, you go to newadultnoir.com, you click on the series discovery tab, and you will see um, a really beautiful set um, of 10 banners with uh, the series books on them, a little blurb the genre of, of the series and you'll get information about whichever series you want and then all you do is just click through to the link and find new authors that you want to jump into a lot of readers really do love jumping into series as opposed to standalone novels so if that is you we have 10 again amazing boss series in all different sci-fi fantasy and horror genres just waiting for you to dive into so go and check it out as soon as possible we also have for October coming up, not only will we renew our crop of free books and renew our crop of series, but we will also be running the October Fright Fest on New Adult Noir. And that's going to be exciting. It's obviously going to be centered around paranormal, par paranormal romance, um, shifters, ghosts hauntings, you know, werewolves, witches, all kinds of cool stuff, zombies, horror. So um, if you're interested in entering the giveaway, we haven't decided on a grand prize or first prize yet for um, the giveaway, but it'll probably be something like a Kindle um, Fire or a KU subscription or something like that. But whether you win that giveaway or not, you will still get a free selection of spooky, frightful, you know, paranormal um, books if you're interested in that sort of thing. So stay tuned for that October giveaway. It will literally not go up until the beginning of October. But I'm just letting you guys know that that is what's coming. Um, so every single month, whether we have a massive giveaway or not, we always have an amazing selection of free books, paid books, and paid series that you should definitely check out. So New Adult Noir really is where it's at if you want to get your monthly or weekly injection of dark and gritty sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. Okay, so that's the announcement I have for that. Um, let's see. Um, sort of like a logistical thing before I switch gears. I'm going to talk about graduate school in a second, but um, I did want to talk to you guys about, and this is specifically for authors, if you guys are interested in building reader lists and um, investing in an email marketing service, again, I would highly suggest MailerLite. I am currently migrating all of my email templates, my sequences, my subscribers, my subscriber groups and tags over to MailerLite. 
um, and I have not been disappointed. I really enjoy the service. It's very easy to use. I love the templates they have available. You can also design pop-ups that are really slick and beautiful. Um, you can you can design um, landing pages and you can design embedded forms. So it pretty much combines the specifications and all of the um, the tools of ConvertKit and lead pages into one single place. So, I mean, I literally was paying almost $200 a month for ConvertKit services and lead pages services. And they're both amazing services, like do not get me wrong. Um, but I literally am now only paying $50, $50 a month. So it's been able to cut my expenses significantly and I still get all of the services that I need for my business. Now, you have to decide as an author or as an entrepreneur, you know, you should look at all those services and decide what you actually need because ConvertKit, um, for the most part, I really enjoyed my tenure with ConvertKit, but when I, I noticed when I migrated over to Miller Lite, Miller Lite's tagging system is not as sophisticated as convert kits just period you know it's just not and um when i asked them about whether or not they would upgrade their tagging system they basically said that they're working on it and this is what i should do in the meantime and what they told me to do in the meantime was very inconvenient so you know i'm not i wasn't complaining but i'm just telling you the truth um right now even though i feel like mailer light rivals ConvertKit on a lot of its different features. ConvertKit still has the tagging system and the auto the auto email and the automation system just down to a science. I mean, I just told them straight up that they just need to like copy right off of ConvertKit because ConvertKit is killing them in that regard. But a lot of authors don't segment and tag their lists the way that I do. Um, I feel like most authors are really just writing books, publishing books, and then just telling their email list about the books when they come out. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But for the level and type of business that I need to run, both for my author brand, for New Adult Noir, for The Bohemian Badass, and for Rebel Ragdoll as a whole, I need something, I need a tagging system that's a little bit more powerful um, in terms of organizing my tags, my groups, and my segments. So for a lot of you, tags, groups, and segments might be like way over your head. Um, I think I might do one day like a free training, like a free like vlog training or something on um, just showing the differences. Or if you don't want to take my word for it, I'll just show you the trainings that are offered by ConvertKit and MailerLite so that you understand what those are for and how you can use them for your business. Um, so I still strongly endorse MailerLite. But um, just know that it, it's perfect on most fronts except for the tagging system. They need to work on that. Um, hopefully that was helpful information for you guys. For my creative uni, um, like I mentioned to you guys before, I've been really into the happy black woman. Just trying to like get my daily dose of positivity and, you know, inspiration every day. And um, that's been really wonderful. Just diving into that brand, diving into that podcast. And right now, I mean, I'm reading a bunch of books and it's hard for me sometimes to keep focus, as I'm sure you might have noticed. Um, so I tend to go from book to book. I end, I end up finishing them eventually, but like, you know, sometimes I just need like a break. My brain needs to switch. And so right now I've recently picked up The Writer's Advantage by Laurie Shear, And I've been wanting to read that for the past two, three years because the book deals specifically with how to own your genre and how to master your genre. Um, she gives a wonderful step-by-step -step playbook as to if you're a horror writer, for example, or a horror filmmaker, how to become the best in that field by knowing what has come before you, figuring out what your voice is, figuring out what it is you want to say with your work, and creating a very specialized, personalized brand for yourself that incorporates all the historical knowledge of your genre, but does something completely new and fresh and puts a twist on a genre that people haven't seen before so that people know who you are. Um, and that's, in my opinion, just a really important skill to have um, and important knowledge to have as an aspiring filmmaker 
and as a an emerging novelist and as a growing entrepreneur. Um, and I think that her book, um, it's called Writer's Advantage, Mastering Your Genre or something. I'll get the actual title for you guys um, and put it in the notes below. But it's Lori Shear, S-C-H-E-E-R. The Writer's Advantage. And I think that it's something that all creators should read. And this is like whether you're a novelist, a screenwriter, a filmmaker, a game designer, a musician, like uh, a fine artist, a potter. It doesn't matter what you are. All of her principles, in my opinion, from what I've read thus far, can be applied to any artistic field um, so that you can create your art but have your special mark on it and really become a leader of your own brand. So that's been really impactful for me and you guys should check it out. All right, I'm going to close this update and podcast off with just a brief sort of run through as to what I am doing in graduate school right now. And it's a bunch of really cool stuff. I mean, it's been stressful because because I've been sick and because of all these other things that were popping off, I unfortunately got a little bit behind. But right now I am catching up, trying to keep up. And I'm actually really enjoying graduate school right now. Russian is wonderful. It is kicking my ass. I'm not going to lie. And Russian is... And this This particular class is like really intense. I mean, the amount of homework that we have in like the first couple of weeks has been mind blowing to me. And in my opinion, we don't, we didn't spend enough time on the alphabet, on pronunciation, you know, just like getting those basic things down, like those basic building blocks. I mean, and I get it, you know, I mean, when, when people learn Russian, when we learn any language, you don't start off teaching a baby by, you know, the ABCs. I mean, you might, but you essentially start off by talking to the baby, you know, and the baby eventually just learns the language and learns, you know, what's going on. So they're doing a very, a full immersive experience, which I totally respect, but I also feel like we should be spending more time on the alphabet, recognizing the letters, pronouncing the letters, knowing the names of the letters and how you use them in a sentence. Because, you know, the letter T is called T, but we don't say T when we use T most of the time. We say T, you know, table, um, you know, Tartarus. Where'd I get that word from? Um, T, but like the word T, you know, touch. So sometimes I confuse... <laughs> the way the letter is said with the way the letter is pronounced. And I sound a little crazy, but I'm working on it. I'm getting to it. I actually just learned how to write my entire name in Russian, which is pretty boss. Um, So that's actually what I'll be working on most of the day is like catching up with my Russian homework because it's a hot mess right now. Um, Also, we are working on our spring production in contemporary trends. And we're learning a lot about devising and devising principles, specifically about rhizomes and how to create generative generative work that has roots, but roots that are not entirely roots. Like they're not static roots. Like an idea can spring from somewhere, but that idea or the place where it sprung from doesn't have to be the core foundation of the idea. It's sort of an abstract and kind of weird concept when you're trying to explain it. Um, in a linear way because rhizomes are not really linear Um, but basically this is just priming us mentally and I guess spiritually to create devised work and I have to admit like it's a, a very interesting class and I'm learning a lot but it goes against pretty much all of my training as a cinematic writer and storyteller you know um where for the most part you have a foundation of um of like history of world building you have a point of origin for you know your stories and your characters and they proceed from that point of origin to an end result that's pretty relatively linear and so this method of developing work that is completely divorced from that point of origin and completely divorced from a linear storyline and completely divorced from an original text is completely foreign to me. So I've actually learned or I'm trying to learn how to check my own 
resistance inside of myself um, and just be open to the ways in which devising is working. And it's a challenge. It's, it's, it's a challenge to let go of concretion and step into the abstract and step into the generative space. And um, so I, I honestly do enjoy challenging myself, even though my original reactions are like to, to resist, you know, this new method. So I'm learning a lot about like theory, about performance, about generative like art making, about devising, and also about myself, which is great. So that's definitely a challenging class in a good way. Um, what other classes? I am really getting my entire life in my dramaturg and the classic play class. Like, it's actually like, aside from my editing class, which I'll talk about in a second, one of my favorite classes. I mean, I feel like every single week I am learning a new skill that I can use to completely just, you know, tear up in a good way, a text, especially a classical text. And so this past week, we just finished reading Backwards and Forwards by a guy named Ball. That's his last name, not his first name. I don't remember his first name. And um, just his way of approaching a text is really incredible. Some of it actually seems like it, it was the origin point of cinematic storytelling. But then he takes it a step further and shows you different techniques of how to jump into a play text and break it down and understand how certain actions are connected to each other, how exposition is supposed to work, so on and so forth. And so that entire, like the first two weeks of that class have really been just enlightening and just wonderful. And I really feel as though I'm going to leave that class with a lot of dramaturgical skills that I can literally use to jump into any text classical or otherwise, um, and, and do what I need to do with it dramaturgically. So that's really exciting. And this week coming up, which is even more exciting, we're going to learn about verse. So, you know, Alexandrine verse, um, iambic pentameter and learn how to count stress syllables and how to analyze stress syllables. We're going to learn more about couplets, how couplets are used, um, and how to sort of look at a play text dramaturgically from a rhythmic and syllabic perspective, which is incredible. I mean, I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to be like the ultimate classical dramaturgical badass at the end of this class. So that's really exciting. And, um, I don't know if I told you guys this cause my memory is shot, but, <laughs> um, in this class, we also have to produce a dramaturgical protocol for a classical work. And I will be producing a protocol for Titus Andronicus by Shakespeare. Um, and basically a dramaturgical protocol is when you look into the production history of a work, you do the historical context and background research, um, you analyze the actual play text, um, you create a glossary, you're basically a scholar of the play text so that you, kn and you also do research on the on the playwright himself, um, which should be easy to find because it's Shakespeare for crying out loud. But you're supposed to be well versed in the playwright, in the time in which the play was written, the historical significance of the play, the themes of the play, the imagery in the play, the language of the play, the plot of the play, the characters of the play. I mean, you have to know the play and the and its world and the larger world it's set in, like the back of your freaking hand. And um, you have to produce a protocol basically displaying your knowledge so that actors, the director, an artistic director can like literally just take your big fat binder and find anything that he needs to know about the play that they are producing. And so I'm doing that for Titus Andronicus, which I'm super excited because at this point, this is one of my favorite plays by Shakespeare, aside from Othello um, and aside from Macbeth. Those are my three favorite Shakespeare plays. And... Um, that is the final project for the class, and that's going to take a really long time and be hella long. But the great thing about it is that I'm going to be able to take all these new skills I'm learning for, from my class and apply it to my protocol for Titus Andronicus and analyze Titus Andronicus from all those perspectives. And then what I'm going to do after I have my big fat binder and I, and I know Titus Andronicus inside and out, the next semester class I'll be taking is the adapted playwriting classes being offered 
And that's going to be really incredible because then I'm going to take Titus Andronicus now that I know it like the back of my hands and literally create either an Afrofuturistic adaptation of Titus Andronicus or a crime noir adaptation of Titus Andronicus. Like both of them are just like way too tempting to deny or to ignore. And I don't really know which way I'm going to go, but I'm super excited because then at the end of this entire year, I will have done all of the classical work of understanding the play that I'm interested in adapting. And then I would have actually finished a fully fledged adaptation. So I'll have two binders, the classical version and then the story Bible and like the film making Bible, um, which will include my adapted screenplay um, for Titus Andronicus. And I love that because after my Sandman movie project and then after my action movie project, the next project will be turning Titus Andronicus from its adapted screenplay form into a film adaptation, which is great. So this is just like really exciting for me that I'm finally able to use all of the things that I'm doing in graduate school to enhance and build myself as an artist. Like that's super exciting to me. Um, and the fact that I am able to produce these portfolios is just boss. And so, yeah, I'm amped. And then I have my editing class, which is amazing. And, um, I have to catch up with a little bit, but, um, learning a really lot of wonderful things like the edit, like editing principles in general, but, um, also just like the technical side of using Avid, which is great, um, which I have to dive back into today and tomorrow so that I get my homework in on time. Um, so that's really exciting. We have all these projects ahead of us to cut and to finish. And um, it's just really wonderful. And I'm enjoying it a lot. And because I'm the graduate student in the class, I have to do an extra project for that class. And um, I've decided to um, basically finish out another course that I'm already enrolled in by Film Editing Pro. It's called The Art of Action Editing. So my project is to finish that course and to produce a finished cut using the footage that is provided by the Art of Film of Action Editing class, which is great. Um, so it's a lot of work that I have in front of me for this semester. Plus I have 400 assignments to grade this week. And then on top of it, I have to do a dramaturgical presentation of the Adams Family Musical, which I'm working on today, uh, and present basically the historical context, the background, and the significance to the entire cast so that they understand, you know, why this is important <laughs> and what the play is actually about at its core. And then I also am going to be appearing on a podcast by, um, you know, a mutual, uh, by a colleague of mine who's an indie author in like the sci-fi fantasy realm. Um, so there's a lot going on this week and it's just pretty packed. So having said all of that, I will get off of my podcast um, and keep grinding, keep doing my thing. Um, I'm going to get the Dragon software, like I said, now update you guys on how that is going um, and how the training my dragon is is running because you have to train it before it, it can work for you. So I'll keep you guys posted. In the meantime, I am giving myself some grace and trying to take it easy and trying to take it one step at a time, be easy with myself. Uh, and of course, be like a responsible person and adult and a great mom. So it's a lot, but you know, that's just life. In the meantime, you guys take care, keep being badass, keep staying indie, keep working on your stuff, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.